Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. This video comes to you from a Western Kentucky cornfield where the 2019 corn harvest is taking place. I'm out in the field with five John Deere S790 combines. These are class nine machines rated at 543 horsepower, which sets the classification rating. It's the largest combine offered by John Deere with a 400 bushel grain tank, a 28 and a half foot unloading auger that unloads corn at 3.8 bushels per second. We're going to climb up in the cab of this S790 and visit with my friend Matt and learn about operating the combine. And we'll also get the experience of what it's like to be out in a big field with multiple machines harvesting corn. So let's climb in the cab and say hi to Matt. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Doing well. Seems like we just saw you yesterday in the sprayer. I know. <laughs> that was only last week, right? Corn's looking good. Looking really good. Yielding good. cab of the John Deere S790 combine. Uh, right here with my friend Matt. We're going to be visiting with him, uh, looking at the corn harvest. We're out in the field with a total of five S790 combines. You can see number one is on that right hand side of the field and then we've got number two, number three, and we're number four. Open up this new land, taking in 12 rows of corn. And then number five is running just behind us. Are we able to see that on the map to show all the dots? Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on it. Uh, anyway, that's an entire map of this 1,300 acre field. All the green is what we've done. And we're over here in this section running long ways. All the, uh, the four black dots are the other machines. A lot of equipment to keep track of. A lot of big acres to cover. Yeah. All this down here at the bottom is what we still have left to, to do in this, the course of this side over. We're working our way to the right of this field. So we can look out the window here. We've got back up. corn over here, and then they're going to work their way over to the tree line there. And this is a 1,300-acre field, and right on the other side of those trees is a 3,000-acre field that we rode out in the Steiger 20 applying anhydrous with Mark earlier in the year. So a lot of big ground here in Western Kentucky to see. It's always good to ride along with Matt to actually see the operation going across these acres. So Matt, the combine can tell us what the wet yield is, the dry yield, and what an average in the field is. Yep. So over here on your main screen, we can see how the corn's doing. Uh, how is it doing? Right now, the instant is right here. It's a 253. It's jumped around around 250s really well. Uh, the average dry yield is 220, and the average wet yield is 233. Moisture today is around 19 to 20. So that's one thing I, I wanted to kind of talk about. You know, you're out here, you're getting this yield. I can already hear the comments. You can see there's still some green leaves out there. And yeah. people are gonna say, well, somebody's always gotta be first. But there is actually a reason for this. What What is the reason you're getting out here at 19% moisture and harvesting the corn? Well, the stalk is already starting to decay. You know, believe it or not, the green leaves will fool you. Uh, <clears throat> I guess all that, the fungicide getting put yeah. out there is what keeps them green. That's exactly right. The, the, this will keeps the leaves green and tries to keep the stalk healthy, but it ends up with disease and stuff. And if you get a bad wind or rain, it'll it'll knock you right over. In this field, actually last night, we had a bunch of that was what we call a gooseneck. That the wind had laid it over and then it tried to grow back straight. So it was all kind of bent, growing up at an angle. It makes it really tough to harvest. Um, 
but uh, I guess well, with a hurricane out there too, yeah, you know, it's you hurricane season overall. It could always cut into the Gulf Coast and then head right up here with wind and rain. That's so right. the sooner it comes off, the better. What, what's the other reason you're you know, uh, starting the harvest at this time of year? Next month we're going to be uh, planting wheat on this ground, so we got to get the corn off uh, and get the ground ready to plant wheat. And then also harvest soybeans right after that. So it's definitely a tight timeline because the wheat's got to get in the ground starting October 10th. You got to disc it, harrow it, fertilize it, yep. and get this harvested. Have enough manpower to run air seeders and combines, trucks, and grain carts all at the same time. It's a lot of a lot of field work that has to be done between now and then. And then it takes about, it takes about three months usually. Yeah, nonstop. You guys work yeah. from seven to midnight every day. Yeah, long six, hours. Six days a week. So as soon as you jump out of this combine, you'll be disking. Yeah, and then back in the combines. <laughs> and that's all in preparation for next June, uh, when this field will be harvested for wheat. And then as soon as that wheat's off, they'll be putting a second crop of soybeans on. So if this corn's not off and that wheat's not planted at the right time, that's going to hold things up next year. We can get a good look here. Matt's filling up the Kinsey 1105 drain cart here. We've got the corn pouring out at 3.8 bushels a second. We can see some of the other combines running just across the field. So Matt, this field out here is, what, about a thousand acres? Uh, actually, this one is uh, 1350. Um, if you count that across the road up there, it's actually a different farm, but it's uh, about 1350 total right here. So how long does it take the five combines that are out here to get through all that? Well, I don't think we'll get it tonight. We've been here since yesterday. Uh, actually, we cut a little bit here Saturday night, but that was just enough to park everything. Um, but the more majority of it was cut yesterday and today. Well, I don't know if we'll get it today or not, probably not, because we've been waiting on trucks a little bit. They're kind of backed up. What and kind of um, what kind of ground do you cover today in a combine like this? I see we're running about three and a half miles per hour over here. Yeah, I try to do it at least 150 acres, uh, if not more. But again, that all depends on, on the trucks, if they can keep them to us. Of course, when corn's yielding 250 bushels, the trucks can't keep up, so we have been having to wait a little bit. That's another big question people always ask, how many trucks are out here trying to keep you guys going? There's, uh, I think, 15 of them running today. Every every truck's on the road, so they're, they're staying busy. We're about 20, 25 miles from the bins. If we look out here, there's two of the combines rolling together. So these S790 combines, uh, they can actually all communicate with each other. Or are you able to show us here on the map? We can look out the window. We've got those two right there. Yeah. Uh, it shows uh, each other's yield and everything. Uh, it shows their name, too. There's Billy Joe and Billy. <laughs> uh, it'll show where each combine's been. Section control shuts off and all that, too. Well, that's a lot of neat technology. Yeah. So we've ridden in the sprayer and the corn planter with you, and we've looked a lot of this yield mapping and stuff in the data. So right here is this iPad again that yep. you're kind of painting over the field, the map of this field. Give it a second to load up. I'll zoom out on the, this entire field, the 1,300 acres, and what we've done is all painted, painted in a green color, and then. Uh, that's all been done out in front of us and to the left. And right here is where we are in this section of the field. So you're in the home stretch on this side of the road, last big section. Yeah, this last half of this side always seems to take forever though. <laughs> it doesn't look like much, but it's, it's a long way across this field. So those white dots are the other two combines that we just passed. Yep, yep. We can see here we're coming up to the headland. And Looks like we're gonna fall in behind them. I guess that makes it easier for the grain cart operators to kind of give some space between the machines. That's right. And we can always unload on the go when you work in a circle. 
Now this wishbone kind of piece of metal that's hanging out here yep. in the snouts, is that the row sense that helps with the guidance? That's right. It, uh, it feels the row as it, as it goes in there and it, it'll steer it to whichever direction it needs to to stay on it. So we'll watch that slide in there. And then all that beeping you hear is it activating. And right now it's actually feeling that row and steering the steering the combine to keep it straight down the road. And if it if it ends up where like you'll see right here where this row actually uh, it leaves this row out, it's not planted, it'll take over with the GPS signal and steer it straight to get to that row to okay. feel it again. So it it never actually shuts off. Well, and speaking of rows, here I can see that angle where the sprayer went. And yeah. we were up in the sprayer with you earlier in the year. You can see it didn't really affect the yield or anything. Just a couple plants missing. Yeah, I'd say there's probably, I mean, 10 plants right there in that section. That, But yeah, as you can see, our yield is still 230 plus, you know. And not a big impact, not but a big impact. it helped this plant, this corn grow up well. Very healthy, healthy stock too this year. It's dusty, but it's, it's very healthy. So here we can see two of the combines out ahead of us, and then we've got a third one over there on loading in a 94, 9420R. Make sure I get the model number right. <laughs> I think they're changing it for next year where it's going to be a little easier to maybe say 9R 420. Yeah, I've seen the leaked photo. Looking forward to seeing those kind of tractors here on the farm. Yep. Here we can see the amber lights on the combine. There are two on the front on top of the cab and one on the back. And that is alerting the op green card operator if the combine is full. They start going off around 75% full or three-fourths. And we can see this one unloading right in front of us. That's 400 bushels heaped up there and it pours out pretty fast. That mound is quickly gone. And we're following in right behind. Harvest in the next 12 rows of work. So Matt, you can actually see the, uh, the grain moving through the combine. Yeah, let's change a uh, page. And right there, it's coming uh, up to clean grain elevator into the grain tank. It's so it looks pretty clean, not too much foreign material in there. Yep. So is that pretty handy for keeping an eye on what's going on? It is. It's always best to manually check, I always say. But So we can look out the back window here and actually see it pouring in there. And then you actually have a way uh, where you can look in the bin, there's a sample area or? Yeah, it's right outside the door there, behind you. Uh, open a little door and you can grab a handful, smell it, taste it, look at it, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Make sure it's ready to go. So here are some of the scenic views that Matt gets to see in the combine. We've got a S790 I'm loading on the go over there. Another wait, one waiting to unload. So the green card operators must stay pretty busy throughout the day trying to keep up with you guys. Yeah, the only time they get a break is when the trucks are slow. <laughs> Other than that, they're running nonstop. So how many bushels an hour is a class nine combine like this churning out? Uh, let's see, average uh, 2,700 bushels an hour. That's very good. <laughs> I'm really not even pushing it that hard either because we got such high yields. I'm not trying to overload the machine or anything. And here we can see two of the combines are right up on the cart. I'm gonna guess we're gonna head over there too maybe. And Catch him or I'll probably let them unload and I'll unload on the go. Or I could pull over there and all three of us could unload on it at the same time. I think they're quick enough right now. It's a lot of corn.
So that's 800 bushels of corn just poured out there. And he's got a little room, I'll top him off. I'll probably be able to make it to the end of the field then. like this is it just experience that all of you guys have harvested this field so many times you do it the same way each year know where to go or pretty much then we got our you know our own system where everyone kind of knows what to do you know in certain situations uh, we've all done it for so long it's just kind of second nature at this point like that. So is that the road sensor jumping the GPS? Yeah. See, we're yeah, back yeah. in a sprayer track. Yeah, that's what happened. I think it's like every, if the road goes out for five seconds or four seconds, I don't know what it is. GPS takes over. We can see here Matt is hands free as the machine makes a 30 foot pass across this corner. You need a little more. Right <laughs> so you're able to control this 543 horsepower combine uh, basically kind of like a video game with a joystick. They're, all the controls are right here at yeah. your fingertip. I know we've got a lot of farming simulator fans. So yeah. how do you control this machine? Uh, it's basically all right here on this joystick. Uh, it's a hydrostat, so forward is forward, back is reverse. Uh, and all the basic functions right here, like the one, two, and three are preset uh, heights for the header. Uh, you got your auger out, in, and on and off button is the yellow button here. The other big yellow button is an emergency stop. Like if I see something's about to go in the machine, I can hit that and it'll stop everything really quick. Uh, manual header controls right here. Uh, tilt side to side, up and down. This one is for if you have an uh, auger header or a draper header with a reel. This would be your reel uh, functions. On the corn header side of it, it has the deck plate spacing, uh, you know, right or left on that button, and then an auto steer button down here. A lot of ease of operation right at your fingertips. Yep. All your basic stuff right there. Now any, like, machine settings and all that is over here on the console, uh, you know, radio, Bluetooth, air conditioner, all the, and all the internal combine settings too. Now is this combine pretty well self-automated that it can adjust to crop conditions and yep. what you're harvesting? It can. The cameras we looked at earlier, uh, if it notices any kind of foreign matter or broken grain or anything, it'll adjust itself uh, if you have it activated. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it works, works great. Well, when you're putting the kind of hours you do, it helps to have everything automated as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. So when you're opening up a new section, we can see here the combines are getting pretty full. Everybody kind of has to shift around to let the cart get in here. Yeah. Uh, if there was a grain cart, the second combine would have unloaded already. <laughs> and taken the first one spot and they'd flip places. But uh, there appears to not be a grain cart anywhere in sight. <laughs> In this case, the least full combine will take the lead, which is me.
little chairs to get everybody in line. And this field is pretty, pretty long field too, so fill up twice going down through here. So it takes the grain car to uh, to unload from one end to the other. Yeah. So there we can see all of our combines and. See on the map where Matt took over. Almost made it. Just kind of make a hole in the side to let the other combines get by. Yep, yeah, so I'm going to ease off into the left over here and then you get situated all back up. And then I even, oh, even match that. Oh, off back oh, right here. To pass, we can take a look at the grain sample. You can see the combines coming up here. You can see the corn is piled up in the bin. And if you want to check the sample, you just open this door and you can look right down in there and have access to the corn or use that camera. And it looks like the combines are by, so it's back to work.
Matt is turning the combine around, and once he gets it in the rows, the auto will right over take over. And now it's a hands-free operation. Thanks a lot for the ride and sharing uh, the combine experience with our viewers on Big Tractor Power. Anytime. And uh, once you're done with this, I'll look forward to hopping in the 9420R cab and seeing a Wishick Disco across the field working this corn up. Yep. Hopefully, uh, about three weeks we'll be done. It moves fast. You guys cover a lot of ground. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed spending time up in the cab of the John Deere S790 Combine with Matt and seeing how the harvest works with all this big machinery. The five S790 Combines, the four 9420R tractors and Kinsey 1105 grain carts all moving across the field in unison and it's really neat to see Matt's perspective of working on this large family farm in western Kentucky. If you would like to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube where there are over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action. Make sure to click on the notifications bell as well so you'll know when the next Big Tractor Power video is released. New videos are coming out almost every day from the channel. If you have any questions or thoughts about this video, please leave them in the comment section below as I try to respond to every post that is made. If you would like to get a preview of what is coming up next on Big Tractor Power YouTube, make sure to check out Big Tractor Power Instagram, where I share pictures and short video clips of what is currently being filmed in the field. As always, thank you for watching.